recognize the gentleman from Idaho, Mr. Fulcher, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, to the panel for be being here and your, your testimony. And you're probably aware of this, but uh, a number of us bouncing in and out aren't doing it because it's rude. It's because there's more than one committee going on. And, but please know that uh, we, we recognize your, your contributions here and uh, are thankful for that and had a chance to go through some of your written testimony. But my first question is going to go to uh, Ms. Wilson, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you that forewarning, but a comment or two here first. Uh, I come from a state right next door in Idaho. And uh, like you, we're around two-thirds of the land mass, which is uh, federally controlled in our state. And so uh, moves like this, in this case, to the benefit of, of uh, uh, our, our veterans and a very worthy cause, I'm particularly pleased to see efforts to insert more local control, in this case, a, a federal transfer to states. And, you know, I've just learned since being in office, this is my fifth year in office, that most members, and I think most people, don't understand why uh, there's a, a few particular states in the West that have such a huge amount of Western land. Can I just ask it first, have, have you, are you a, a native Utah? Have you been in Utah a long time? Yes, sir. I've lived in Utah my whole life. Okay, so you understand the ramifications of that. And uh, there is a particular reason in history, post-Civil War, all that, uh, how, how states that came into the Union were treated differently with the land and whatnot. Um, most people don't understand that. And most people don't understand what it's like to be at the state level and govern when you're subject to all those federal rules. And so one of the major things that's important to me is local stakeholder control, not necessarily a transfer, not necessarily, uh, it, it can take many forms. And I know in Utah, in the not too distant past, there's been a number of attempts to do uh, transfers, to have more local control. And I would just, especially if you've been there your whole life, uh, I know, like in Idaho, there's been state legislative attempts, there's been transfer attempts, there's been nibbling around the edges and some uh, very good uh, partnership programs like GNA, uh, Good Neighbor Authority, Roadless Rule, those types of things. But uh, from your vantage point, what's, uh, this is, this is going to be a win. And, I, and I'm very supportive of these bills, and I, I know you are as well. Um, what, what's the best approach for those of us in the West and these dominated federal lands to try to engage with more local stakeholder control with the federal government? Um, I can't speak to the, to the larger issues. I can speak from a DOT perspective. And in this particular case, we've worked very closely with our federal partners. Um, we work closely with Camp Williams on a regular basis. We have for my whole career, and they've been really great partners. The BLM, too, in the area, they're very willing to work with us, help us. So I think those local um, relationships are really But is it a important. legislative approach? Is it this? Is it, is it a statute through, through uh, these channels? Is it uh, what's most effective? Well, so in this, in this case, we wouldn't be here um, except for the fact that this land was set aside by a presidential executive order and the BLM doesn't have a mechanism to transfer it to us. If that weren't the case, this bill wouldn't be in front of you. Okay, and, and uh, not to cut you short, but I wanna give Mr. Klein an opportunity to address the same thing. What's the, what's the best approach? You're coming from a similar type environment. Yes, sir, Congressman, thank you for that. I, in, in our county, we are 97% owned by public uh, lands. And so everything we do with deals with public lands. Having the, um, the uh, partnership and, and everything with our local governments is, is a big help. Um, it still has issues as well. Uh, one of the biggest issues we deal with on, on anything on the public lands is the NEPA process. And, and the ability to really work through that in order to manage those lands, so. And so where would you be, and not to segue too much, I've only got 30 seconds, but what would happen to your county without PILT and without SRS? We'd dry up and blow away. And that encapsulates the challenge, I think, that is a, for, for myself and the members of the West trying to communicate some of the issues we face. Most people have no idea. So thank you for that. Sorry for, on the time, didn't get to the rest of the panel, but I appreciate your insight. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. 